Hey guys, I'm David Demuzio. Welcome to Hair Loss Hope. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Rolandas, or just Rolandas. I came across his videos here on YouTube and boy, they warmed my heart. I was so happy and every time I watch his videos, I'm so happy to see how much success he's had with his own hair transplant and the amount of research that he's done. If I could come up with an ideal hair transplant candidate, it would be Rolandas. So I brought Rolandas on the channel because I know he's got so much incredible knowledge to share with you guys. And I thought, especially this first question that I have, which is, Rolandas, what are the things that you think that are most important that you've learned since starting your very extensive research about hair transplants, but that you didn't expect were the case at the beginning before starting your research about hair transplants? The most important thing that so far I see it that I did as a mistake, most people are doing as a mistake when they start starting their research is they're focusing too much on uh, like technique itself of the hair transplant or uh, like the actual results presented by the clinics uh, because most of the times it, they can be completely misleading and uh, yeah, so that's what I did as well. When I started my research, I was looking at, uh, okay, there's FET, there is FUE, there started popping the HI uh, and so on and so forth. So I was looking into that. I was like thinking, okay, which uh, technique is going to be better for me because I'm uh, I'm Norwood 5A. So it's pretty big area to cover. And, uh, and, uh, and I was like thinking, okay, so which one to choose? So uh, obviously I started researching from Turkey and uh, which are mainly focused on FUE. So that was, I guess, my like first mistake, <laughs> just focusing on one country only because like, according to my budget, that's like the most budget friendly, if it makes sense. Yes. So yeah, I think that was the, the, the biggest problem because uh, I was not opened for like a, the bigger market basically out there. Like uh, once I started learning more about uh, how the surgeries are done in US, for example, they are very FUT focused and in, in a good way and uh, what other surgeons are out there, I realized that in Turkey, the actually quality overall is not that great. So for the guys that are starting doing the research, I think it's quite important to focus on who is doing the surgery, rather how it's been done. In my personal opinion, there is a biggest debate online is going on right now, uh, whether FUE or DHI is like the best. And you're probably familiar with that as well. In this madness, like some clinics are overselling it. I can guarantee you, you're gonna give a DHI implanter pen to some, you know, random guy in the street. He's not gonna be able to place the graft nicely, <laughs> or you know, if you're gonna place the graft, like they're gonna grow in a, you know, weird angle. So, uh, like technique itself does not give you success. What, what important is uh, who is doing the surgery? So I would say that's like uh, one of the biggest. Most people are focusing on price when they're starting uh, their research. Uh, obviously, I was the same. And it's absolutely normal, like we don't want to spend a fortune or, you know, <laughs> uh, some people rather, you know, save, they, they've got a certain amount of money, they rather buy a car and get a head transplant in the same time. Because when you start doing your research, uh, all of it looks the same. Like, what's the difference? There's like a 400 clinics uh, in, about 40, 400 clinics in Istanbul alone. So like, why, what's the difference? If you, if you don't know anything about the head transplant, you start looking at them, you're gonna notice it's like, okay, the results are the same. There was no hair, now there is hair. So, you know, like, why would they pay more for someone? And then you, then the questions start to arise, like, oh, the, this surge is probably greedy or something, <laughs> which is, again, pretty common. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, the, the, the biggest takeaway, basically, the price does not really dictate the quality. If the surgery is uh, not super expensive, it doesn't mean it's bad, but it doesn't mean it's good. And vice versa, if the if the price is going to be skyrocketing, like in the US, there's like one of the most expensive markets, but it doesn't mean you get right away quality. So again, focusing mm -hmm. on the price is like pretty much the bad way to go about it, if it makes sense. So again, Absolutely. going back to the, to the first one, like the most important thing I think to focus is to focus on who is actually doing the surgery, regardless of the price. And like, if you're going to, spend some quality time on that you're gonna skim through surgeons you're gonna see uh you're gonna you're gonna have a like a list of good surgeons and then you can decide how this is more expensive i cannot afford it but this one it's kind of a little bit budget friendly to towards me so you know like i would say that's 
the way to go about it. Yep, I absolutely agree. Focus on who the individual surgeon is. And like you said, that's generally the last thing that it seems like the average consumer focuses on when they go to get a hair transplant is who is actually doing their surgery. The other day I got written by some random guy. He's like a marketing person for a surgeon here in the US. He asked me if I wanted to come on this surgeon's podcast to talk about hair transplants. And so I went and I thought, okay, well, I'll check out this, the podcast first. And I went and I listened to the podcast by the surgeon. And the first episode that I was listening to, the surgeon said, well, I, I don't do my own graft extractions. Like I have, I have techs that do that, but I do all my own placement. And I was like, really? And you know, I, he charges a lot. He's here in the U S he's like a a, a a famous hair transplant surgeon with a podcast about hair transplants, you know, and a YouTube channel, I guess he's starting and wanted me to come on there. I'm not going to do it just because I was like, man, I'm not going to support a surgeon that doesn't do their own extractions. Or if they did, I would at least want more information. Like if, if I, if I was willing to say that as a surgeon, like I don't do my own graft extractions, then I would want to say, but I have so-and-so and so-and-so and and then name their exact names and like this person's been working with me for 10 years and this person's been working with for you know eight years or whatever it is and when you come to have surgery with me these will be the two techs that will be doing your graft extractions and this is their experience and here are their before and after photos as well (laughs) then i might be okay with it but if it's not if that that's not added then screw that Uh, what am i hiring you for like that's that's one of the most important parts of the surgery and you don't even do it exactly on the surgeon what they do 100 Mm percent like in my opinion so they're always going to be a consistency if uh, they're going to be let's say as an example one patient only a day and if the same person is doing those surgeries it doesn't matter what exactly i don't i don't mind particularly uh techs extracting the grass but if it's the same technician doing it all every time for like you know for every single patient you're going you're gonna to yep. see some consistency. So if you see 10 results from that clinic and all of them looking good, there is a pretty high chance that the 11th result or let's say your result going to be something similar. But on another hand, if they do t- 10 to 20 surgeries a day and you don't really know who is doing the extraction. So if you look at these 10 results, what are the odds that you're going to be one of them? Like, you know, you don't really know who's going to be doing your job. So I think it's important to know who is doing it and... Uh, exactly and who are going to be doing your surgery so then you can kind of you know make an informed decision basically you can actually compare results and you know what's what was the potential outcome yes 